Welcome, everybody. We're here with Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. And you know what? I'm very excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's going to help a lot of people. What is going to be so important about our podcast? Well, I think the most important thing about our podcast is just sharing the uh, the alternatives to uh, normal Western medicine, helping people get rid of pain, uh, teaching them how to live pain-free lives, uh, showing them ways to prevent pain. Uh, it all kind of revolves around pain, but uh, it goes much deeper than that. It, it affects your overall wellness and your health. I'm, I think it's going to be great for a lot of people. I'm looking forward to today's episode. We're going to learn more about Dr. Tim. We're going to learn more about physical medicine, and we're going to lay some groundwork for some future episodes. So glad you're here. On Dr. Tim's Pain Free Podcast. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Tim's Pain Free Podcast. Help us spread the word by sharing the show with your friends and family and posting to your social media. Now back to the show. Welcome back. I'm Dan. This is Dr. Tim. We're here with Dr. Tim's Pain Free Podcast. We're excited to learn more about you, Dr. Tim. He's an expert in pain management and all kinds of taking care of people's health. So tell us about why you got into medicine or why you got into healthcare. Well, it all started way back when I was in high school, actually. I, uh, I knew that I always wanted to help people, and I didn't know exactly how that was gonna, uh, how I was gonna wind up doing that, but, um, you know, my father, our father, we're brothers, by the way, our, our father was a pastor, and this was out in West Texas when I was in high school, and, and uh, I would notice sometimes that uh, he, we would go on visits, I would tag along to a hospital, and he would uh, look at one of the people in our church uh, and he'd go visit them in their time of need and whether they're having an operation or some sort of sickness or ailment and uh, I started to notice that I, I didn't really like hospitals and uh, you know growing up as a kid even before that I didn't really take a lot of medications uh, we didn't go to the doctor very much we lived a pretty well life um, with wellness in mind and preventative uh, so I thought well, you know if, if I want to help people and I thought I wanted to become a doctor but I don't really like what doctors do you know, the whole hospital environment was like a sterile place, and there were kind of funky smell, long, uh, sterile hallways that, you know, you had to be real quiet in, and, and there were people sick and dying everywhere, and I thought, well, I don't really want to be a doctor. I don't like what doctors do, uh, but I was always kind of really good with, with angles and lines and drawing. When and I wasn't artistic, but I could use a ruler and a pencil, and I could draw things with perspective and... Uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, that comes into the story a little bit later. But when I was about a junior in high school, I came home from school one day, and my mother was actually crawling around the living room on the floor. Her back had gone out. We didn't know why. We just knew that our mother was in, in, in massive amounts of pain. And my father had um, called around to some different people that were attending our church and said, who should I take my wife to? And, and uh, sure enough, we loaded up my mother, we carried her to the car and we took her to a doctor. And on the way in, I noticed that it said Dr. Love. And I thought, well, he's a doctor, so you know his name is Dr. Love. And, and we get on in there and, and he starts to do some work on her back and he never used any medication. He didn't uh, tell her she was gonna have to have surgery. Uh, he didn't put her on some long-term plan to fix her back. He literally, uh, at the time I thought it was magic, he used his hands and a couple of little instruments and he realigned her spine and she stood up off of his table and she instantly walked. And it was a miracle we thought right before our eyes. I had no exposure to what that was prior to this moment. And on the way out of his office with my mom now walking, um, I saw the word chiropractor and I thought, aha, that's it. That's what I'm going to become. I get to use my hands. I get to think about alignment and angles and all those different things that I was good at. And uh, from that point forward, I knew that I was going to be a chiropractor and I was going to help people. So that's initially what got me started. I went on through undergraduate and became uh, a chiropractor after attending chiropractic school. I got out of school in 1996. I opened up in my current location, uh, or here in Carrollton, not this building, but a different location here in Carrollton in 1999. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history, it's history because it's history. changed multiple times over the last 20 years or so. Uh, and uh, it's, it's been, uh, I'm coming up on my 20 year anniversary of being in practice uh, this April. So, 20 years, okay. Yeah. Well, that qualifies you as an expert. You've done the 10,000 hours. Absolutely. Yeah, so after you got out of school, you started this, and then it became Trinity Integrated Medical. So right. what exactly does integrated, what does that mean? Well, integrated medicine is, is kind of a different, uh, a different lane, so to speak. You know, you have your your normal chiropractors who uh, use only their hands 
and they're very skilled and that's what I am and what I did for 12 plus years uh, in helping people um, you know free up the motion in their spine so that they can relieve pain and there's a lot of pain uh, uh, relief in that type of treatment and even corrective care can restore curves and that sort of thing and then you know aside from that there's the medical doctor on the other side of the fence so to speak and if if you have back pain and and you go to the medical doctor then he's pretty much going to prescribe a medication that's going to either kill your pain or make you not sense your pain is there and it's going to decrease your inflammation and he's going to hope that that does the job over the next couple of weeks and you know if it doesn't then he might prescribe a different medication but but uh, it's like they're they're two extreme opposites this chiropractic hands only approach and this medical approach that's pretty much pills only uh, and then you can get into a little bit of physical therapy and strengthen the muscles and improve range of motion but but an integrated practice like we have here is uh, truly that it's integrated between different types of providers that are all working on the exact same condition on the same patient so it's not uh, interdisciplinary where we've got a medical doctor and a surgeon uh, and a neurologist and, and a chiropractor and a physical therapist and they all kind of take turns doing their thing within the same under the same roof it's really more like one patient a comes in and we all take a look at that patient and we put our minds together and we truly integrate what we know as experts on what we can do to help the patient. So the different lanes within physical medicine and rehabilitation that make up an integrated practice are uh, some injection therapy, some natural injections, some chiropractic therapy, some uh, functional movement therapy which is similar to like PT or rehab. We have medical massage therapists. We do some uh, medically supervised weight loss and we put all of that together to help the person's overall condition, their wellness. Which is the perfect storm because for a while there it seemed like medicine and chiropractic were kind of opposed to each other. But I've sure. heard you say before, you know, they all have a good thing. Like if I have my leg broken and my bone sticking out, don't take me to see the chiropractor. That's right. Like yeah. Somebody don't come to my that. office. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So they all have their good thing. And in this office, we get to put all of those great things together. That's right. And truly have an integration so that everybody gets to bounce ideas off each other. That's right. I think that's a great explanation. That's what we're here about. And we're going to continue to talk more about that as we move forward. We're going to be learning more about physical medicine. We're going to get some deeper into some rehab and stuff. So we're glad you're here on Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast is produced with you in mind. We are on a mission to better educate the world about living a pain-free life without drugs or surgery. Help us by spreading the word and sharing this podcast. Thanks for listening. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Tim, Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. So earlier you had mentioned the term physical medicine. So tell us a little bit about well, how do you describe, what's the definition of physical medicine? Physical medicine is uh, more of a, um, an approach to treating the spine without the use of drugs and surgery. So physical medicine got its start way back in the 1940s when uh, the, the phrase first got coined um, by a man, a doctor named Rene Callier, and he was a physiatrist. So a lot of times people say, Oh, a physiatrist does physical medicine. Well, they're a little bit different than your general practitioner uh, medical doctor because they don't just look at uh, the body from a standpoint of uh, do you need a pill prescribed. They actually get into the functionality. If we're functional movement people, then uh, you know we function and move every day. We bend, lift, and twist. And if we're not doing that properly, then that over time is what leads us into things like the osteoarthritis and the degenerative changes in the spine. So uh, a physiatrist or a physical medicine specialist is really uh, looking at the body as a whole, how one area of the body can be affected by the other areas of the body. Uh, it's not a, a system, uh, excuse me, a, a symptom-based uh, philosophy where if you have a symptom, we treat that symptom and once we get that symptom resolved, you're all done. Um, because that symptom showed up possibly because other areas are contributing to it. So it looks at the body more holistically. And I think one, you know, we see patients every day here in the office, and one example of that would be somebody comes in from an NVA. They had a motor vehicle accident. And they said, I went to the emergency room. They took x-rays. They said everything was fine. And then we x-ray them, and we see that their, one of their hips is an inch lower than the other hip. So the people who are looking at those x-rays in the emergency room, they weren't necessarily looking at the same thing is what we'd be looking at here. That's right, that's right. At the emergency room, you know, their, their job is really to make sure two things. One, nothing's broken, and two, you're gonna live. And if you're <laughs> if those two things are right, they're gonna let you go, and half the time they're gonna say, if you have fine. problems, you know, follow up with a doctor, but everything looks good. We get those reports. Sometimes the emergency room reports 
uh, after an accident are, are the shortest report you could ever imagine. There are a couple of words, and they say normal neck or normal cervical spine or normal low back. And then we take our x-rays or we get those same films, the very same ones that they shot, and we read them ourselves and we say, wait a minute, what we know about biomechanics and the physiology and the, uh, the motion and the alignment and the balance within the body, uh, we know that something shifted because your hips are supposed to be level with the floor. Your spine should be straight up and down and perpendicular to that floor. So when you're off to one side or head's way forward, or you know, those are signs that other things have happened. Whereas the ER might say, yeah, but nothing's broken and you're gonna live. Cause that's true, you're probably gonna live, uh, but you might live in a lot of pain and have issues of scar tissue later on that could have been prevented if you uh, went to the physical medicine route as opposed to the allopathic medicine route. Yeah, and I tell patients all the time in the office here, life is too short to live in pain. That's can't, right. Can't be living in pain. So I know we have a major impact on patients every single day here in the office. So describe for me or tell me what is the impact that it has on the specific person? Um, you know, I think it's the, the, the most gratifying part of what uh, we do here to me is when a person's, uh, you know, it's like the light bulb goes on over their head after they go through a brief education on uh, what's causing, uh, you know, them to have this pain. They might have gone to a couple of other places. Um, you know, I, I often tell a story about a, a patient who shows up here and has a really bum knee and they go to the orthopedist and the orthopedist says, oh, you're bone on bone in your left knee and, you know, we're going to need to operate. And, uh, you know, what caused that knee to be so worn out? And, and the orthopedist will even tell the patient, um, well, you know, it's old age. It's just a fact of life. You're going to... You're going to grow old. And my reply to that is always, well, how old is your other knee, you know? Right. Uh, because the other knee is exactly the same age, but it looks good and clean on the x-ray and there's no just, pain. Not just age. It's not just age. Age is a factor. Sure. You know, the, the longer something's been dragging or wearing and tearing or, or improperly moving uh, when, during our 10,000 steps a day that we take, then the more likely it is to degenerate. Uh, but you know the most common thing we see in the office here is is that degeneration and when we can explain that to a patient and how it got its beginning and what we can do to help reverse some of those things uh, now with breakthroughs in regenerative medicine we're actually reversing those degenerative changes um, you know it's it's very fulfilling to see that patient go aha I knew this I got in that wreck when I was younger and and I didn't have massive amounts of pain but I knew something was off for a long period of time and then that being off or however you, the patient wants to describe it is uh, no more than than the alignment on the car being off and then what happens eventually the tires you know begin to get bald on the inside or or wh what have you uh, uh, the answer to that is not just to replace the tires but it's to replace the tires and to fix the alignment and if you can catch it soon enough the alignment will fix from having to replace the tires even eventually, which is like the joints getting replaced. Yeah, like your knees good. are a reflection of your alignment. Absolutely, and that they're connected to your ankles and your hips, and, and uh, you know, when you get a patient to realize that their knee is hurting, and sure, it has worn out on one side more than the other, but when you look at their hips and they're like this, then you can imagine that one knee is taking a whole lot more of the pressure than the other one, and you'd never want to just, so you know, give a patient something to, minimize their knee pain and that be it just based on the symptom that's really the difference between the allopathic medical model and what we do here we're not a symptom based clinic we don't say oh they have this pain let's help with that pain we say oh they have this pain what caused that pain let's figure it out let's go back to the beginning and say it happened way back when and now this has been affected and now eventually we can even predict sometimes well if we don't get this taken care of it's going to help uh, it's going to you know, manage to find its way into another joint and start to wear that one improperly. And it, we're all so interconnected uh, inside. So uh, you know, that, I think back to the original question of what kind of is, is the benefit to the patient, it's when they see that, there's, uh, you know, that they're all connected and they really can adopt this lifestyle of, I need to change what I'm doing. I need to change the way I'm lifting clothes out of the laundry. I need to change the way I sit in traffic every day with my posture in my chair. I need to get a stand-up desk at work. I need to uh, stretch more before I play weekend soccer or whatever the case may be. We can give them all these little tools to help them realign and strengthen and be a, a more well person all overall. And it's such a fulfilling thing personally to be able to help people. To, sure. to get them out of pain. Yep. Such a good, I know it's, we're on a mission here to do that. Yep. And part of that mission involves an organization that you're a member of, Doctors for Health and Wellness, yep. correct? Yep, the Doctors for Health and Wellness Foundation is a foundation that I found out about 
um, probably in 2011, and I joined up in 2012. And uh, the mission statement of Doctors for Health and Wellness is it's all about educating people. It, again, it's a nonprofit, and for me to be a member as a doctor of that foundation, then I have to prove to them that I am donating X amount of hours. For the first five or so years, it was 50 hours. And in 2019, they upped it, excuse me, it was 80 hours, and they upped it to 150 hours. Wow. So almost double what I've got to donate. So when I go out and I speak um, at a at a corporation that's within five miles of here of the office and I educate them on things that I'm going to be doing in this podcast about uh, injection therapy or regenerative medicine or weight loss or uh, how to function better and, and have better posture in the workplace, ergonomics and that sort of thing. When I go out and give those lectures and seminars, I get to count those hours. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this podcast is all the effort in putting in time to make this thing happen. I actually get to count the hours, so that's going to help with my 150 <laughs> hours uh, this year in 2019. But uh, you know that's what the Doctors for Health and Wellness Foundation is. It's the uh, it's an organization whose mission statement is to educate the public on alternatives to allopathic medicine, basically. Um, and there's medical doctors that are a part of this, uh, Doctors for Health and Wellness. There's probably some physiatrists, I would imagine. There's physical therapy. There's uh, chiropractors. That It's a very all-encompassing. And so it, it's not out there just to bash and to bash and to bash the opponent of being the, the pill-pushing medical doctor. It's really to just enlighten people and educate people. And, and nowadays, I've found more than ever, people yeah. are into that. Yeah. You know, with the opioid crisis that we have going on right now in America, uh, that's going to be a whole other topic where I'm going to give you stats that will just blow your mind when it comes to uh, seeing the effects that opioids and heroin have had on our country uh, as a whole. And, uh, you know, if, if we can do something that will cause those 65,000 scripts a day are being written for opioids in our country. 65,000. 65,000 scripts a day. If we can do anything... To, to take a dent out of that, to make a dent in that, and, and, and say, you know, we saved those 10 or 12 new patients this week that could have possibly gone down the trail of going to the doctor and getting a, hey, it's easy to take this pill and you not realize you have pain. Um, but it's very addicting and, and, and yeah. very very negative, and there's, there's all kinds of um, overdose uh, stats that, um, you know, in one single year in the United States, um, we've we see more deaths related to opioid abuse and overdose than in the entire Vietnam War put together in one year. In one year we also see more deaths associated with opioids than the entire Iraq conflict that we had in the early 2000s. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. And if we can do something to prevent uh, just that whole overall philosophy of I need a pill, I need a pill, I need a pill, then I think that's uh, well, why we do what we do. Yeah, it's had a huge impact already. I know it was part of the mission to continue to work toward that, to getting less people to have to take opioids. It's a great segue also. It's things we're going to be talking about in the future. Looking forward to future episodes. What are some of the things we're going to discuss in the future? Besides uh, opioid you know, one of the biggest things that kind of is, is affects everyone is posture. And so we're, we're going to look into posture and see what kind of effects your poor posture can have. Yeah, as I say, that, you straighten up. We all do that. Yeah. Uh, and I give these seminars weekly at different places. And as soon as I say the word posture, the whole room sets up taller. Yeah. Because we all know, uh, but we just don't necessarily uh, realize the, the detrimental effects that poor posture can have on our overall health. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk. We're going to spend an entire episode, maybe two segments, on regenerative medicine, talking about stem cell therapy, uh, which you may hear it called uh, amniotic allograft, which is kind of the the overall covering of what what stem cells are uh, and and how they're helping regenerate tissue and being regenerative. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know straight up trauma when. When you say, well, all that's fine and good, you talked about all the little things, but what about when I tear my meniscus because I played softball? What can I do to repair that and, and maybe not have to undergo the knife and get an arthroscopic surgery? We're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about uh, upper and lower cross syndrome. We're going to give you some facts and history that date back to protocols that have been created in the 1940s that we're still uh, using today in physical medicine. And, uh, you know, we're going to spend one more thing we'll talk about is trigger points and that kind of goes hand in hand with the posture but we'll go into that uh, at that time but we got lots and lots of good things that are all really designed to help you 
uh, conquer your pain and learn ways that you can live pain free and it's not too late uh, we have uh, elderly patients in here every Absolutely. day that have say they've been in pain for decades and we start to uh, peel the layers of the onion back so to speak it doesn't happen overnight but we, we to help those people even though they may have been in pain for 30 40 years uh, we help them, uh, teaching them ways to, to move better, more properly. And uh, sometimes it involves some structural support where we give them a brace and they say, wow, I put that brace on and I had no pain within minutes. Yeah. And it's like, that's all you needed all along was a brace. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to really focus everything around pain and uh, how to avoid it and how to get rid of it once you do have it. Well, I know Dr. Tim's a great educator. He does all these seminars out there, health fairs and all that stuff, but we're going to bring it to you directly to your phone or to your computer so you can always find us right here. We hope today's episode has taught you something at least and we're going to look forward to learning a lot more. You can do us a favor also, help us out by sharing this video, sharing our podcast, put it out there to your social media, let people know that we're here and we want to help and uh, enjoy this episode with you. Great. Thanks for being here on Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. Talk soon. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. Help us spread the word by sharing this show with your friends and family and posting to your social media.